This is going to be your guide for completing the Galar decks in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So completing the Pokedex is a very daunting task. My Nintendo Switch has even dimmed itself at the mere thought of it. But the reason why you want to do it is because you get the Shiny Charm, which gives you a better chance of getting Shiny Pokemon. It turns it from a 1 in 4,000 chance to about a 1 in 1,300 chance. More specifically, it gives you two extra chances at getting a shiny Pokemon per encounter, and this does stack with other methods. So if you're using the Masuda method, you end up with a 1 in 516 chance at getting a shiny Pokemon, and if you're doing the Wild Battle method, that depending on how many times you've battled a wild Pokemon, it also can bring down the odds as low as 1 in 455 if you have battled 500 of a species of Pokemon. Now, that's going to be the biggest reason for wanting to complete the decks, is ending up with a shiny charm or you could just be a completionist and you want to figure it out for this video. Also, this video is effectively going to turn into a version exclusive guide as well, so if you've been wanting help on that, this is going to be your go-to, because that's going to be one of the biggest roadblocks in completing a dex. Now, for Pokemon Sword and Shield, the Galar dex has 400 Pokemon, so there's just a lot to catch anyways. There's going to be a lot of just blank spaces that are going to be very easy to fill up inside your dex, and that's pretty much going to be the personal quest for completion but this is going to focus on the best ways of optimizing how to get Pokemon. And that brings us to Pokemon Home. So the only reason I have not yet completed my Pokedex in Sword and Shield is because it's exponentially quicker and easier to do so with the help of Pokemon Home. For a couple of different reasons, actually. So if you already have a Pokemon in Pokemon Bank and you bring it home and then you put in Pokemon Sword and Shield, that's going to be super easy Pokedex completion, especially if you already have a living Dex worked up. Now, this doesn't count for like Galarian forms and Generation 8 Pokemon, but that's where Pokemon Home is going to be even even better than I thought it was going to be. So before the release of Pokemon Sword and Shield, we knew that Pokemon Home was going to have a GTS feature. This means that you can use the version exclusives and you can just trade them that way. You catch one from one version, you ask for its counterpart in the other version, and then that's just going to be the GTS doing its thing. But I don't think anyone could have anticipated that you could have up to three Pokemon in the GTS at once, and even if you don't pay for the premium, you can actually still make this video work for the free version of Pokemon Home, because you can move up to 30 Pokemon from Sword and Shield into Pokemon Home. You won't have access to Bank, but you can still use the version exclusives or other desired Pokemon for the GTS and even get some more efficient wonder trading. Instead of doing one trade at a time inside of Pokemon Sword and Shield, you can be catching Pokemon, training, or doing whatever, while in the app, you could also be getting three Pokemon at once. And if you have the premium version, you get to Wonder Trade 10 Pokemon, so you will fill out the Pokedex in no time at all. But that brings us to what this video is about. It's going to be the most efficient way of getting the version exclusive Pokemon, and then how to offer them on the GTS. So I ask that you please leave a like on this video if it helps you out, and you need to share it with all of your friends. You need to put this video on blast. You know, if, if everyone just watches this video and then shares it, it kind of becomes infinitely viral, and that's going to be a very good thing for the Pokemon community because we need to know what to trade what for and where to get them because if you look at a list of version exclusive Pokemon it's generally going to be by Pokedex number and this is not helpful at all there's a few that make sense like okay Spritzy for Swirlix Aromatize for Slurpuff that should be pretty easy but then we'll just see like strings of sword exclusives and then strings of shield exclusives what do we trade for? You know, it's really simple if you just look at it and go, all right, I'm offering a Farfetch, I'm asking for Ponyta, everyone handshakes on that one, and then we can complete the Pokedex. And fortunately, there are some pieces of media where the Pokemon company has like official counterparts. That if you did the double pack pre-order, you get the Dynamax Crystals, and in one version, you can only get Tyranitar, and in the other version, you can only get Komo'o. So this kind of shows that you can do different things. Larvitar won't appear po in Pokemon Sword, JMO won't appear in Pokemon Shield. So what you do is you offer one for the other, and then that's going to be easy. So this video is going to try to break it down in that way. And so far, one of the best lists I found is on Games Radar, that they just have a one-to-one, -one, which is pretty fair and makes a lot of sense. Uh, they kind of messed up on the Pseudo Legends, but either way, if you're trading a Pseudo Legend from one game for a Pseudo Legend in another game, that works. Dino for Larvitar, Hakmo'o for Sligu, or Jengmo'o for Gumi. If we follow this, then we should be good to go. 
But if only it was that easy, because Pokemon Sword and Shield makes version exclusives really weird. It's not like in other Pokemon games, where you go to a route in one game, there's a Pokemon, you go to a route in the different version, there's a different Pokemon. Because of max raid battles being sorted by typing, we can run into all kind of weird version exclusive crisscross crossover weirdness, and it does make it kind of awkward to get all of the version exclusives even inside of your own game. For example, this den right here in the Dusty Bowl, uh, we have Zuelus, but then we also have Mandibuzz in the same rarity slot, depending if you have Pokemon Sword version or Pokemon Shield version. However, for the rarest Pokemon, that's where we see Hydreigon and Tyranitar, and even for the rare den, that's where Mandibuzz appears again, then we see Scrafty. So we have all kinds of different version exclusive Pokemon being crossed over here, and it does some weird things. Now the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because Pokemon are a lot more common in max raid battles, depending on what you're looking for. So if you throw a wishing piece into this den, there's like a 20% chance that you get a Zuelus from it. But if you want to get it just natural caught in the wild, it's like a 2% hidden encounter in Lake of Outrage in specific weather. So you can do that, like go to Bulbapedia for the specific Pokemon that you're looking for, and then you can search for it, or you can also just do the time skipping method. Invite others, we already know about this, progress the day ahead, and then re-roll that den and see if you get lucky on the Pokemon you're looking for. This is still going to take less time and be easier than trying to go for like some of the rare Pokemon, and that's another thing about Pokemon Sword and Shield. The version exclusives seem to just be like 1%, 2%, 3% rare encounters just for the sake of it. So now we get another chance. I was hoping it would help me out right there, but it didn't. Either way, you still have a much better chance at getting it. It might actually be closer to 10%. So it's a 15% in a 3-star raid, and then a 20% in a 4-star raid. So I guess if you add the odds of a 5-star raid, it's still a 1 in 10 chance to do it through the dens. You're getting Watts, you're getting other potential rare Pokemon through this method. You can also get the full evolution and other version exclusives. But we can also take this, and I want to show you guys how much weirder it gets for the version exclusives. So if you set your date to April 1st as I have, it's going to create a global sandstorm. Now if we have Universal Sandstorm in the wild area, we can go over here in Pomon Sword version, and that is going to be your Komo'o. However, in Pokemon Shield version, it's going to be Tyranitar. So it's not like this is how we find Gudra in the wild area as opposed to Hydreigon or something. It's, you know, Pokemon are just going to kind of appear. And there's also a couple of different methods of helping the completion. Naturally, a one-to-one -one trade would make more sense. So even trade something like a Zuelos for the Pupitar, that's a stage one for a stage one. But if you have all Komo'o, like you can trade a Komo'o for a Larvitar. It just kind of depends because it's actually easier to get a Komo'o than it is to get a Jangmo'o in Pokemon Sword. Because I just set the weather, I do this, and I can also time skip. So if I wanted to, I could go back to that den, do a time skip into Sandstorm weather, and then I could have Komo'o appear again. I catch three of them and I can trade full evolutions for only a for like an entire evolutionary line will people bite on that maybe because if it's you know if everyone catches three tyranitar and three kamo -o, there's not going to be any pupitar or jangmo -o or anything else like that for trade so it could imbalance it however there's also just brejects so maybe you'll get someone's breject even if they're not trying to complete the decks because the gts is massive and there's going to be like a million people using it so that adds, that adds something to it. I also already have a Komo'o, so that's what I mean. Like, you can catch multiple of these, and then I'm just going to trade these for the other evolutionary parts of other evolutionary lines of pseudo-legendary Pokemon, and then maybe that'll complete the decks. We're not done with the weirdness, however, so I believe if we fly out over here, we need to go to, like, this kind of area. That's a Braviary. So as we saw, Mandibuzz is going to be a shield exclusive, that means Braviary is going to be a sword exclusive. So not only can you find Braviary in that den over there, Braviary, or not Braviary, um, Mandibuzz in that den over there in Pokemon Shield version, you can find Mandibuzz flying right there in Pokemon Shield in the overworld without doing any den shenanigans.
And that is only the beginning of our suffering because there's still a lot of other version exclusives that we need to go and hunt down. So let's get on it. Next ones are going to be a little easier. Dappled Grove. So what we can do is we can take our clock and then set it back one month from the sandstorm weather. So date and time, as you can see right there, it's going to be set to March. And then to make things just a little bit easier for ourselves, this was something I covered in another video. If you want the full details check that out in the description down below as well and if you're in the description that much for my videos might as well drop a subscription so a pokemon that has the harvest ability makes it a higher chance of getting grass type pokemon so what we just did was we made it overcast weather and what we want to do is look for shaking grass so it's going to be a hidden encounter there we go and what it does is it makes Grass-type Pokemon more common, so this is where we can get Seedot or Lotad. Now, in this weather, you can also find yourself a Nuzleaf or a Lombre, but once again, that's not going to be as simple, easy, and straightforward, because if you get yourself the Lotad, catch two of them. You go one, evolve it all the way up, that's going to be all the Pokemon for that evolutionary line, and then you just trade the other one for the... Lotad or whatever so yeah we can get ourselves a C dot right now and then you can just trade it over back and forth vice versa do whatever evolve them all the way up and that is going to be a step towards pokedex completion and i'm going to want to grab myself an extra so i can go ahead and do that all right let's take down a few more of these because fortunately it's a lot of big evolutionary lines so when it comes down to the individual species it's not an insane amount so we want to do set your date to june 1st 2020 this is going to give you fog and then what you want to do is head on over to the giant's cap so it's this right here that's going to be gothita and then in pokemon shield version it's going to be solosis but this is like finally an easy one something that makes sense gotharita wait what Okay, so it has taken three months of Pokemon Sword and Shield for me to learn this, but there are certain patches of grass in the wild area that spawn different Pokemon. This has never come up until this moment, so if you go to this patch of grass over here, that is where we can find the Gothita, and this is where the evolutionary line is straightforward, so pump that full of candies, and then you're going to get the evolutions. Do the same for, actually just like I said, catch two of these. One, you evolve for yourself, get the Pokedex entry, the other one you trade to then evolve the Solosis and get the Pokedex entry. Huh. There's like, there's just so much that goes into this apparently. A lot of nuance. And while we're here, we can save ourselves a bit of time by getting a Soul Rock or Lunatone at the actual Giant's Cap. If you look at it, it looks like a big hat. See? Here's another weird one. Big surprise. So if I was playing Pokemon Shield version, I could use the fog right here, and all of those Duskull would actually be Sableye. But if I want to get the counterpart Mawile in Pokemon Sword version, I have to change the date to a Snowstorm to get Mawile to appear. So Global Storm Snowstorm is going to be in February. So let's back out. Let's go in. Gotta get the snow. Gotta refresh the spawns. And... Come on, Snover. Uh, I think actually, not just snow, maybe Blizzard actually. Damn. Wait, what the hell is that running at me? Oh, it's a Mawile. Never mind. We got it. It's just hard to find in the grass, apparently. So, grab two of these. Fortunately, Scraggy and Krogunk make it nice and easy for us because all you have to do is head on over to Galar Mine number two and it spawns in the overworld. Depending on what version you have, you might already have one and they also appear in a lot of different places in the wild area and even a few max raid battles for the evolutions. So not a really difficult one to get. That's going to be easy for completing the Pokedex. And as much as I've been trying to avoid it, we will still need to go to Lake of Outrage for some rare Pokemon. This is going to be weather dependent, it's going to be low odds, and it's going to be hidden in tall grass. And it's going to look like this, depending on the dates and whatnot. So, in a snowstorm, 5% chance of getting Ice Q in Pokemon Shield version. Pokemon Sword, Sandstorm, 5% chance of getting the Stone Jorner. Now, Snoop Dragon is going to be in Thunderstorms with a 2% chance, very low. And this is where the advantage kind of shifts over to Pokemon Sword version, because you can use a Flash Fire Pokemon first in your party, much like how I use Trevenant, to actually increase the odds of getting Turtonator to appear. But these Pokemon can also appear elsewhere, and that is going to be in Axew's Eye, so let's go over that. It's the big dragon den that's actually in Axew's Eye. 
So here's the den, you all know it, and here's how that den ends up playing out, and it gets pretty weird because of how unbalanced it is. So it's easier to get Turtonator without the den, and it has to be a purple rare den to get Drampa in Pokemon Shield version. Also, it's easier to get Sligu in a regular den than going for the 2% chance of getting Sligu in weather, much like how it'd be a 2% chance of getting... Zuelus in weather in Lake of Outrage. So there's like a lot of weird crossover and overlap, but the other Pokemon that are available are Hakmo'o and Jangmo'o, and as we saw, these rare Pokemon, you can just go into a sandstorm and get them without being rare, without them being rare. So strange stuff. I hope I didn't lose you on this one. But yeah, it just kind of shows that if you want the Drampa, you're going to have to soft reset until you get a purple den. And that means you're going to have to do the save method to where when you throw in a wishing piece, you have to see if it's a normal den or a purple den before quickly soft resetting. So that could be a little more tricky. But then once you get the purple den, you can quickly cycle through it until you get the Drampa that way. Or maybe just hope. And the thing is, it's like not even like that much of a competitive Pokemon. So it's not like you're going to get a Drampa Breject on the Wonder Trade that easily. It's just going to be a little bit of a struggle. And then that kind of brings us to some other version exclusive Pokemon. So you can find a Tart Apple in Axew's Eye. So use the Tart Apple on Applin. That gives you Flapple. The Sweet Apple gives you Appleton. That is a very easy exchange right there. If you want to get yourself an Applin, that's also going to be on Route 5. So daycare route, you just go along and then there's like a 10% chance that you can get it. So it's not too difficult to get the Applin and then set up that trade. One of the less complicated ones for this kind of video. Now here's where things get a bit more complicated because we're going to have to do a trade evolution. So getting Spritzy and Swirlix, very easy. You go to Route 5, 30% chance in the overworld, no difficulty whatsoever. Also, getting the evolution item to trade it, not that hard. You go over to Hammerlock, you talk to this BP girl, and she also has some evolution items. So, Whip Dream, Sachet, and that's also where you can, or Sachet, and then that's also where you can get the Reaper Cloth for if you ever want a Dusclops or a Protector for the Rhyperior, Razor Claw, so we got some, we got some good items right here if you need them. But the thing is, on the GTS, it's not going to be a guarantee, you know, if you're offering, like, if you're uh, trading a Spritzy that has the Sachet, and you're doing that to trade for Swirlix, there's no guarantee that the other person is going to have the trade item on the Swirlix. So what you can do is take your version native Pokemon, and then give it the evolutionary item, and then ask for the evolution. So I'd put up the Swirlix, and ask for Aromatisse. You put up Spritzy, ask for a Slurpuff, and then you can trade the Aromatisse or Slurpuff, back down for its pre-evolution because this is only for dex completion not like competitive or keeping any of these pokemon dang you hate to see it i forgot that gts on pokemon home means pokemon bank mechanics so no held items so you can't do any held item trades like that however there's still a few things you can do just trade it with someone else trade it with a friend if you don't have Nintendo Switch Online, or if you don't have any friends, it's still possible. You need to go to Bridgefield Den B, and it has to be a purple beam. So Rare Den, it's going to be uncommon, and then you can get Slurpuff or Aromatisse, depending on the game that you have. Then you can swap it around, trade it that way. Little, little weird on that one. Also, since we're doing like a lot of swap trading and stuff, this is where you can just do Excel Gore by trading Carablast and Shelmet. Whatever one you have, swap it over, GG easy. So, little, little inconvenient, but not too crazy. Or Rangaroo or Passimian, that's going to be in Glimwood Tangle. And because I'm dead inside, I'm just going to tell you guys where to get the last Pokemon as we head to the location of the Shiny Charm. So what you want to do, head to the hotel, go to the left side, go up this, and then we want to go all the way down the hallway. And then in this room, we will find the Game Director he is dressed up as a nurse. He gives you the catching charm once you become champion and the shiny charm once you have completed the decks. So to complete the decks at this stage, to get Farfetch'd, you need to go to Route 5, 5% 5 chance. And then to get Ponyta, that's going to be Pokemon Shield version. That is going to be Glimwood Tangle. You guys might be familiar with that because of the whole Glimwood Tangle event that revealed Galarian Ponyta. And then we still have one little bit of exclusive left. And this is the one that just really ended my joy for any of this, even though it was already kind of dead anyways. So Corsola, Galarian Corsola, can't be found outside of the wild area, and it has to be specific weather in Giant's Mirror to find it. 
no other wild like no other version exclusive pokemon is this specific compared to its counterpart darimaka is also going to be a wild encounter but it doesn't care about the weather because it's going to be found on route 8 or route 10 both of these are five percent chance and that wraps up this video so if you guys enjoy the video a share would be greatly appreciated for how much work went into making this as well as a like a sub and all that fun youtube stuff if you guys enjoyed the video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching